I've been getting into discussions, kind of arguments, on Twitter with people like Christy Winters about people like Steve Shives, whom I used to really, really dislike his videos, but I kind of like some of his, his more later ones. There are still some areas I disagree with him on, but, you know, he he says a lot of things that are correct. It's, it's hard to disagree with him on, on many of his points. But some of these arguments I've gotten into with people on Twitter is about how there are a lot of people who seem to think it's perfectly okay and acceptable and, and just proper to block people who are merely online friends with someone or, or follow someone or subscribe to someone who has a very, very differing view, especially people who have anti-feminist uh, leanings or disagree with critical race theory, things like that. For myself, I online friend and follow and subscribe to people that I completely disagree with. I find that it broadens my perspectives a lot more than just going with some sort of echo chamber. I don't really want an echo chamber. Most of the time I want to be challenged. Not always. And there are some issues that I am probably not likely going to budge on. Uh, one of them being, uh, let's say, non-binary genders. Again, I'll, I'll call people what they want to be called, but I'm not going to change my mind about non-binary genders. Also, I'm not going to change my mind that I think it's ridiculous that it's transphobic for a gay man to be into men with penises, right? I, I'm, I'm not going to accept this idea that it's transphobic just because I like guys with dicks. I, I just, sorry, no. Having said that, there are a number of people out there who will not treat people with dignity, who refuse to pe treat people with any sort of dignity if they have differing opinions. They assume that they're full of shit all the way and treat them that way the whole time. Now, granted, I've, I've done my fair share of that at times. You've probably seen it on this channel a couple times. It's something I, I need to work on myself. Again, there are a couple issues that I'm kind of that are hot-button issues for me, so... But is there any sort of truth to this idea that the kind of followers someone has is a representation of the person's real viewpoints? On my channel, I have a lot of commenters who have a very wide variety of opinions, and I appreciate that. There are a number of channels that I watch, though, that the people who comment are all coming from one perspective. Does that mean that the people that I'm following or subscribe to actually have the viewpoints of the people who follow them? One example would be Tim Pool. Most of the comments, I'd say probably 95% of the comments, come from people who blatantly show that they're on the right. And he gets a lot of comments from people saying, well, why don't you just switch to the right? Why don't you join our side? He gets bombarded with that. Now, if he didn't continually say that he's on the left, then he probably wouldn't get those comments and people would just assume he's on the right. Again, it's obvious that most of his commenters are on the right. The same goes for people like Sargon and Dave Rubin and a number of others. Are these YouTubers just virtue signaling that they're on the left? Do they actually have right-wing viewpoints and just want to cling to the label of the left because they know that the right-wing tends to not give a shit about poor people and oppressed people and minorities and disadvantaged people? I mean, right-wingers say that they care about the elderly and poor people, but they expect that churches should take care of that, charity should take care of that, not the government. But do these YouTubers in question, who say they're on the left but only seem to make fun of the left, do they just care about the views and Patreon money? At what point does criticizing the left, or certain things that are coming from the left, from certain parts of the left, become tantamount to being a right-winger? Right now, the primary critique of the right-wing is critiques of Trump and his administration, and anyone who supports his administration. 
Well, what happens when people get sick of criticizing Trump and his administration all the time? Most people don't really like Trump. He may be doing decent on the economy, and people can agree that, you know, since he's been president, the economy has been doing well. Now, whether or not that's out of his decisions or not is, is I guess, up in the air, I guess. But most people don't like Trump. They particularly don't like his personality. They don't like the fact that he'll say things like the word bullshit in tweets. He's, he's just not professional at all. He's not very presidential. Of course, I guess that's some of the reason why a number of people voted for him, because they wanted someone who's outside of the normal sphere of who someone would want to be president, I guess. But what are people on YouTube supposed to say about Trump? that hasn't already been said before, especially by most of mainstream media. You know, not Fox News, but, you know, most of mainstream media, uh, including uh, talk shows, and just, it's, it's a constant making fun of Trump. Or should people just keep repeating themselves and keep repeating those things in hopes that people will listen? I mean, there's a certain point where people just stop listening to that. We can certainly critique Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity Sean Hannity, who is now starting to peddle religion on Fox News. Bible study. But, uh, I mean, we could, we could uh, talk negatively about how Ben Shapiro talks really fast. But to what end? Where are the right-wing people who are spouting edgy and controversial statements on college campuses? Where are the college professors saying, you know, really right-wing things that offend people that don't get, you know, removed from their position? Where are all the edgy right-wingers on Facebook or people with right-wing ideologies who are trending on Twitter? I mean, what are we supposed to be critiquing about the right-wing now besides what's already been done by mainstream news, except Fox News? So I'll ask again. At what point is critiquing the left tantamount to being a right-winger? At what point is that? Is it the followers? Is it just, is it the frequency of how much someone criticizes the left? When is it? When do they suddenly become a right-winger? Ooh.